Hey there, how are you doing? Great to meet you. Uh, every year there's this phone with tremendously great features at a very reasonable price. Last year there was the Poco F1 and uh, this year that looks to be the Mi 9T or as it is launched in some regions as Redmi K20. With the Poco it was all about performance. This body here is really focused on mobile photography and that's what we are exploring today, the cameras. Let's get started. Welcome everybody, it's the tech for channel. My name is Michael and over here we inspect Cooltech. And uh, today we want to have a look at all the features and details about this so exciting triple camera setup which is operating at 48 megapixels at a maximum. And some people would mistaken some of the photos with DSLR quality because really Xiaomi have stepped up their game in terms of camera quality. So in this video I'll talk about the strengths and the weaknesses, all the different shooting modes, what we can do with additional applications, pretty much everything that you need to know before getting this for your favorite camera phone, because most likely it's going to turn into such, you know, favorite camera phone. Uh, price is around $300, and most likely this is the best camera phone you can buy at this price range right now in the second half of 2019. And most likely if you're watching this video in 2020, the camera setup is still very relevant and very capable. One thing I need to underline, uh, that's $300. So if we try to compare it against the flagships coming from Huawei, which costs like uh, more than two times more, no, it is not as good, but easily puts to shame a number of other flagships or flagship wannabes, and also can be compared with some DSLR camera quality. So let's begin with the photos and make an analysis of how good or bad they actually are and take a look at the camera setup and the app features. First, to understand the capabilities, a few words about the hardware. Main sensor is the 48 megapixel Sony IMX582. Then there's the second wide angle 30 megapixel sensor, as well as a telephoto sensor with 8 megapixel capacity. On the front, we count on 20 megapixels, which are empowering this pop up module. The first thing to examine is the main camera. So by default when you launch the camera app it's going to use the main sensor but it's going to capture the images at 12 megapixels. The more picture we see the more you're going to understand that it offers nice blurring effects without any additions. Should you need the full 48 megapixel size it is a swipe away. But here are two photos taken side by side. 48 megapixels versus 12. So perhaps the 48 megapixel might look a little sharper at first sight, but have a look at what happens if we scale them and zoom in more and more. Looks like the amount of detail is quite the same, unlike what Xiaomi claim on social media. This is more or less the case with almost all of the 48 megapixel sensors nowadays. And bottom line is that if you need a photo that requires post-processing, after shooting, better shoot in RAW format at the standard mode rather than taking 48 megapixel files. It is not worth using 30 megabytes per photo for a very minor, possibly ignorable quality bump. If we want to switch to the wide angle lens here, uh, it's, it's rather simple. You just need to go to the camera app and pinch in, which is going to change the zoom level to 0.6, which means that you have just activated the wide angle lens. It has fixed infinity focus and tricks like blurring the background won't work over there. Next, in a few moments from now, are the portraits. But first, I want to portrait for you the sponsor of this video. And a big thanks to Ivacy VPN, an award-winning solution for its speed and reliability. You can use up to five devices from a single subscription. And plans are starting from as low as $2.25 per month. So if you ever have had issues with torrenting, Netflix, or any other kind of location or privacy related matters, Ivacy VPN is what you should check. And a special offer for all my viewers you can find in the description below the video. Now, the mode that truly impressed me is the portrait mode. It's, it's really surprising how good Xiaomi managed to develop their app so that it, it does process the photos in such a good way. The background is really well blurred and the algorithm is really powerful even to recognize faces. Now, uh, in order to use the portrait mode, uh, we're using this top lens over here, aka the telephoto lens which has narrower field of view. 
Therefore, the recommendation is to be around 2 meters away from the object that you're shooting so that you can achieve the good depth of field effect. This is the setup that I've tested the most and very often photos taken with this mode are very successful thanks to both the face recognition algorithm but also thanks to the good MIUI camera app. But there also are situations where portraits are over sharpened and this is extra aggressive if the light amount is low. The camera app also has night mode, panorama mode and pro mode. Likely from all the three, the night mode is most interesting. When comparing the stock camera against the Gcam app, I noticed a lot of interesting things. And disclaimer, Gcam app, for those of you who have never used it, it's a ported version of the Google camera app, which is very popular on the Pixel phones. And it has this night side feature, which is capable of capturing a number of shots of the same object, then putting them together and extracting most out of the scenery. And usually the photos look much brighter and you can see a lot more details compared to a single uh, shot of a dark scene. If somebody is interested in getting the Gcam ported version for the Redmi K20, you can find it linked in the description below the video. Now, have a look at these two shots. The stock camera has some more details on the most visible part of the image. However, on the darker areas, there's a complete lack of detail as there's nothing there. On the Gcam app, the amount of information is preserved throughout the whole image and there's more color saturation which most people would perceive better. Enough photos, let's have a look at some video examples. As a YouTuber and a person that enjoys so much taking videos, uh, to me it was essential that the camera of this phone takes better videos than my previous daily driver, the Poco F1. So yes, over here the camera does better videos than the Poco F1, actually choose better videos than a number of good and reputable brands out there, even better than some flagships. Maximum resolution is 4K with image stabilization out of the box. On the Poco F1, you still have to use ROOT and a Magis module in order to get stabilization in the hash resolution. Thing is that this phone lacks optical image stabilization, meaning that the image stabilization feature relies entirely on software improvements. And they might not be as good as we want them to be. For example, if we make this simple trick by aggressively tapping on the phone, there's a jello effect which is very well visible if you're filming distant objects. For daily usage, if you're not abusing it like I do, it's totally fine. 1080p is available even at 60 frames per second, which is good. Again, pinching in switches the zoom to 0.6 and this activates the wide-angle camera which feels almost like using a GoPro, with the exception that it lacks the rock steady stabilization. Uh, wait, rock steady is for the Osmo action. I meant hyper smooth over here, but you, you get the idea. Stabilization is not up to par with some of the best action cameras. The wide angle lens has this infinity focus. The normal lens has the regular autofocus. And I've noticed that it suffers under certain conditions. For example, a dark object surrounded by light scenery, you almost always get the background focused and the essence defocused. We talk video, therefore slow motion. The phone supports slow motion up to 960 frames per second. 32 times slower than a regular video. That's amazing. Uh, you, you can't have 960 FPS throughout the whole video, but at least uh, part of it could be stretched. And also it supports the more mainstream 120 frames per second and 240 frames per second. The standard resolutions are supported by stabilization, no matter which lens is in use. And overall, despite the jello thing I've shown you, the image stabilization is really, really good. It's quite hard to make a difference to optically stabilize footage in daytime conditions. But here we go again, one more problem I need to talk about. And it only affects video recording, especially in 4K. There's stuttering. You know, you, you start recording the video and practically the first five seconds of each video are useless because of this stuttering. You know, the, the frames are un unfortunately not properly recorded. And that happens mostly in 4K. And it's also visible sometimes in full HD resolution. I've tried different modes. Uh, there's a very slight difference between H.264 
and H.265. So these are two codecs. H.264 is the old codec, which gets a larger file size and everything is native. H.265 is the more modern and lately more trendy solution, which gives you the same uh, bitrate and quality at a smaller file size. But apparently even a smaller file size does not cure this phone from the issue. Uh, looks like this kind of behavior plugs most of the cameras that have the 48 megapixel sensor as part of the setup. And I so much hope that Xiaomi are going to fix that with a software update. Unfortunately, the first initial update for this Redmi K20 or Mi 90 phone did not help and did not improve the camera. And the only thing we can do is to wait. Switching to the front, the most interesting characteristic of the front camera is that it just flips out. That's pretty fun. Most of the kids love that. You know, it feels like a great toy. Uh, of course, it has this protection when, when feeling it's going down, you see it automatically comes back. So even if you drop the phone uh, before it reaches the ground, most likely this pop-up camera is going to be back in the body in order to preserve uh, its integrity. Sensor on the front is 20 megapixels, does the job right in any kind of mode, but has no stabilization. And if you use a bumper case, there might be something visible like this blackish thing on the edge, which is caused by the case that I use. The bitrate of all the cameras is good. Main shooter could have been slightly better at 4K. It's only 40 megabit, which is twice less than the video bitrate of the already mentioned GoPro Hero 7. You can see that in good light condition, sharpness is good, colors are wonderful, even sometimes slightly oversaturated. Dynamic range is great, noise is at a reasonable level. The camera setup on this phone simply rocks. And I think at the moment it's the best camera smartphone that you can buy for around $300, end of story. Mi 90 or Redmi K20. And the better part is that everything I've said about this camera is relevant to the Mi 90 Pro and the Redmi K20 Pro because over there the only difference is the CPU. Over here we have Snapdragon 730 and they, they use the 800 series which is a little bit more powerful. The thing that I don't know yet is whether the more powerful Snapdragon also suffers from this stuttering at the start of the video recording. So if somebody has the Pro version, please let me know. When you start recording a video in 4K, does it stutter during the first five seconds? Final test, the audio quality when you're recording a video, and these are almost the perfect conditions, like uh, at the moment I'm at a relatively quiet place, with the exception of the cars which are passing by. And I'm using the wide-angle camera, by the way, because uh, besides capturing more from the scenery, it also doesn't have any of these focusing issues because of this environment where we have a lot of light and darker areas which are mixed. It certainly is going to be a challenge for the main sensor to do the proper uh, focusing. And we know that the wide-angle camera has a fixed focus and it's, it's looking pretty cool, maybe a little bit oversaturated. What do you think? By the way, all the videos and photos you've seen are not touched at all. They are as raw as they could possibly be, so maybe we can discuss about the color silence in the comment section right below the video. That's been all about this episode. I hope you find it enjoyable and hopefully that has helped you a lot to decide whether you need the K20 slash K20 Pro or the Mi 90 and 90 Pro because essentially this camera setup is the same for those four different models and I hope to get a good discussion in the comment section right below the video. If you want to support the channel, you might start in by actually smiling. That's better. And of course, if you want to contribute a little bit more, there are some affiliate links below with good discounts, the share button, the like button, subscribe button, whatever you like. Thank you so much for watching this episode and I'll see you in the next one.